All right, today we're going to be talking about kinetic and potential energy. This is the lesson associated with Physics 20, uh, 3.6.1. So first of all, we want to define energy. Energy is the ability to do work. Okay, uh, the units for energy is joules. So you can do things with energy. I guess that's one way. Energy is the ability to do things. Now there are different kinds of energy and we see in this diagram solar energy, uh, geothermal energy, ocean energy, uh, wind energy. These are all different forms of energy that you know we can see around us every day. And we're going to have a look at, at some other more specific types as well. Now mechanical systems are a system of elements that interact on mechanical principles. Okay, and in you use mechanical systems to do stuff and if energy is the ability to do stuff then energy is present in mechanical systems. Now mechanical energy we define as being either kinetic energy which is energy of motion or potential energy which is stored energy of position. We could say that um, mechanical energy is the sum of kinetic and potential energy. So this expression down here, mechanical energy equals EK plus EP, means mechanical energy equals the sum of kinetic and potential energies. And this diagram is just showing that there's different levels of kinetic and potential energy. Here when the object is motionless, it has no kinetic energy, but has lots of energy position because it is vertically displaced. And as this object moves through this roller coaster or whatever it is here, um, it will have different levels of kinetic and potential, but the mechanical energy, in a conservative system anyway, uh, is always going to be the same. Okay. Now let's define kinetic energy a little bit more um, specifically it is the energy that a body possesses by virtue of motion so kinetic energy you know if I'm riding a bike uh, because I have mass and I'm going at velocity I have kinetic energy and that's the formula for kinetic energy is EK equals one half MV squared where M is the mass in kilograms and V is the velocity in meters per second so here's a kinetic energy example. Chad is running to the library at speed of 4 meters per second. His mass is 80 kilograms. Find his kinetic energy. So kinetic energy formula, we write it down, and then we find what variables uh, are the knowns and unknowns. The unknown is kinetic energy. The mass and velocity are given, so we write those down. Then we substitute into our equation 1 half 80 times 4 squared, and we get 640 joules. And we need to always remember to write our answers in the proper number of significant digits. Since 2 is the smallest number of significant digits in our original data, we need to answer our question with two significant digits. So we will change the 640 to 6.4 times 10 to the 2 joules. Now potential energy is the energy possessed by a body by virtue of its position <clears throat> um, relative to others or stresses within itself, electrical charge or other factors. Some examples of potential energy would be gravitational potential, chemical potential, and elastic potential. Now gravitational potential is energy associated with the gravitational field. Okay, so you need to have a vertical displacement from some fixed position and you're going to always be referencing uh, potential energy in connection with some reference point, okay? Like the ground is quite often used as a reference point, so potential energy compared to the ground. But I could lift up a bottle and put it on a table and say what is potential energy in reference to the table. And therefore the vertical displacement from the table would be the, um, you know, factor that we'd be interested in. Now the equation that we use for potential energy is EP, this is gravitational potential, equals MGH, where M equals the mass of the object, G equals the gravitational field constant or the acceleration due to gravity, 9.81 meters per second, and H is the vertical displacement from uh, the reference point that we're using. So here's an example. A uh, 20 kilogram ball is held at a height of 7 meters. What is the ball's potential energy? 
Okay, so we use our equation, Eq equals mgh, m is 20 kilograms, h is 7.0 meters, and g is 9.81 meters per second squared. What is Eq? Well, we substitute into our formula, 20, 9.81, and 7, and we obtain the answer of uh, 1,373.4 joules. Now, again, we have to take a look at our original data and find the smallest number of significant digits. This has 2 and this has 2, therefore 2 is our smallest number of significant digits. And, therefore, we express our answer with two significant digits, 1.4, we round 3 up to a 4, times 10 to the 3 joules. Now, what would the ball's potential energy be when it hits the ground? Well, we could use the same equation, but just put in 0 instead of 7, and you'd see it has no potential energy then. Okay. Now, electric potential energy, that's another type. Let's have a look at a, an example of that. A uh, 12 volt battery has 500 joules of electrical potential energy. Determine the battery's charge. So the equation we use for electric potential is Ep equals Vq, where V equals potential difference in volts and Q equals the charge in coulombs. So we write out our equation as well as the variables we know, the voltage and the potential energy. And our unknown in this case is uh, the charge, the coulombs. So we will rearrange our equation to isolate the variable we're looking for. So Q will equal EP over V. So then we can substitute into that rearranged equation and we'll get 500 joules divided by 12.0 volts gives me 41.7 coulombs. Now, when I take a look at my original information, I have three significant digits here and three. So my answer I will express in three significant digits. So I could leave it as 41.7 or put it into scientific notation, say 4.17 times 10 to the 1 coulombs. It's good to get into the habit of putting into uh, scientific notation because on diploma exams, that's almost always what they require. Now, elastic potential energy, I'm going to talk about that. Um, Hooke's law is a principle of physics that states that a force, that D force, needed to extend or compress a spring by some distance is proportional to that distance. So here we have that force, you know, that's extending or compressing is equal to negative kx. That's the uh, equation you get from Hooke's law. And k is the spring constant. Now the spring constant is going to be specific for a particular spring. Um, if I have, you know, a very thin spring, a light spring like in a pen, it's going to have a very small spring constant. But if I have a very large, thick spring, like say in a vehicle, shocks, uh, suspension, um, that's going to be a very large spring constant. So the spring constant is specific to the spring being uh, examined. And x is going to be the displacement from the equilibrium position. Okay, now what is the equilibrium position? That's going to be the position that the spring will be at when it's not being compressed or stretched. So if I just took a spring and I put it on the table, say, oh, okay, there it is. That's the equilibrium position. Now, um, if I pull it, I'll see that the force increases. If I pull it twice as far, so if x increases by 2, then my restoring force will also increase by 2. Now, you can also have elastic potential energy in spring systems, and that equation is um, elastic potential energy is equal to 1 half kx squared, where k is the spring constant as we've discussed previously, and x is still the displacement from the equilibrium position. So in this case here you see the equilibrium position, and then x is that displacement from it. Now work. Uh, what is work? Work is, we said that energy is ability to do work, so something's happening when work is done. Uh, but a force is said to do work when it acts on a body and there is a displacement. So in order for something to happen, something has to move, okay, at the point of application in the direction of the force, okay. So that's also important that the force, uh, a displacement has to happen in the direction of the force, and then work is done. 
So a force applied to an object will cause an acceleration, and therefore no force is necessarily, uh, necessarily present when the velocity is constant. So here you can have um, force without motion. Okay, so a force is exerted on an object but it's not moving, so no work is done. Uh, but here you can also have force being applied because the force being applied to this object is in upward direction and the um, direction of travel is forward and it's not accelerating. Okay, so if it's not accelerating, you can say that no force is being done. Okay, or if no dis displacement in the direction of the force, uh, then no work is being done. Okay, so here's an example. Uh, Jimbo applies a force of 200 or no, 25 newtons to move a box three meters. How much work did Jimbo do? Well, work equals force times displacement. So you substitute to substitute in 25 force three for displacement, which needs to be in meters, uh, and that equals 75 joules. Okay, notice that the units for work are the same as units for energy because it takes energy to do work. Now, um, so in that case, 75 joules. Now, here's a different one. Jimbo applies a force of 500 newtons to move a wall, but it doesn't move. How much work did Jimbo do? Well, it doesn't mu matter how, mi how much force was applied. It matters if there was a displacement. So there's no displacement of the wall, so I could put it into the equation. Uh, it shouldn't be 25, it should actually be 500. 500 times 0, and then... Uh, that's zero joules, anything multiplied by zero, so no work is done if there's no displacement. Okay, and that concludes our introduction to kinetic and potential energy. Once you have listened to this tutorial, make sure you submit a summary.